This is John Vrezen with you on Around the Northwest. Uh, it's time to talk knees. We all have a couple, and uh, they invariably give us bother at, at some stage. Uh, when we're younger, that tends to be injuries of one sort or another. And then as we uh, go on a bit in the years, it can be osteoarthritis or you know uh, other ailments. But uh, uh, Johnny Lowry hopefully is going to put us right on perhaps how we can um sort of uh, uh front load and how we can uh work towards not just easing the problems when they arise but also maybe avoiding the problems and and not getting there in the first place so uh, uh johnny now joins us uh on the show johnny good afternoon afternoon john thanks for oh, having me right. on Peter, yes you are indeed how are you john good thanks good thanks um we're, yeah we're live, we're live on socials as well by the way uh, just if anybody wants to tune in and by the way if anybody wants to get in touch if you've got a problem with your knees or if there's something that's niggling you in in particular in that department then let us know and then uh, maybe we'll be able to uh to help out but uh, and knee problems very common john yeah it's it's one of the most common things we'd see in the clinic aside from probably backs and necks um you know, we, we know kind of knee injuries are, are very prevalent. Uh, we know kind of from the research about one in three men and one, one in two women will experience knee pain, um, you know, and, and the incidence increases with age as well. So uh, most of the, those particular figures are in people above above 50. But, you know, we know kind of we can get knee injuries like sprains and, and impact injuries and different things like that. But what we're going to talk about today is just those kind of more generalized uh, types of knee pain that we'd see frequently in the clinic um, and those kind of from middle middle age and up um, so because when when we have a problem with our knee the first thing we think oh well, what did I do did I twist it or you know did, did I overwork it and sometimes it might not that might not be the case and it might just be something creeping up in you like osteoarthritis especially you know if, you, if you're moving on years yeah and where there's not kind of an obvious thing it can often be like a i suppose multiple little factors that are all merging in together and and those are probably the more frustrating injuries for people if they can't link it back to something specifically you know they come in and say look this pain has been getting a little bit worse for for a number of months i can't think of what i did to actually hurt the knee um and there there are a number of different knee conditions that kind of present like this as well so we would have uh, probably the most common one aside from osteoarthritis would be a thing called patellofemoral syndrome um, where your kneecap uh, has a little groove in your shin bone and a groove in your thigh bone and it's designed to track up and down through there when you bend and straighten your knee and um, so if there's any little issues with that it can give you kind of generalized pain to the front of the knee as well and, and I mentioned before just the osteoarthritis thing which obviously you know, we, none of us in life can avoid wear and tear as we as we get on in the decades, decades start to accumulate. So that would give you more kind of pain then and around the inside and outside of the of the knee joint. And again, those both those conditions uh, it can be very difficult for people to kind of trace back, you know, why they started. Um, and for both those conditions, ultimately, does it does it lead to a knee replacement or an intervention? Does it lead to surgery uh, and and you know, can surgery be successful without um, needing a knee replacement? So the, the osteoarthritis thing definitely would kind of be the one that would, as, as kind of the years go on, lead to possibly the likes of a, a partial or a, or a complete knee replacement, total knee replacement. Um, so that would be where the, the joint basically, it's like a, an engine in a car where it kind of runs out of steam nearly and, and over time it's, it's not able to do its job because it's so kind of... Uh, there's so much deterioration there so that that would be where you would get the replacement there are other types of surgery as well when there's kind of i suppose a lesser degree of wear and tear they have a meniscectomy it's called where you say for example if you have the meniscus if you imagine like a ham sandwich and the ham is the is the inside filler when you have two bones in the knee you have like a, a meniscus which is a spongy kind of cartilage type uh, substance in the middle you can get little tears in that and up to 50% of us walking around every day will have little tears in it and have absolutely no issues. Um, and the majority of those can be treated with physiotherapy. But sometimes if there's a, um, it's called a bucket handle tear, if you imagine a smooth surface, if the surface is no longer smooth and it's almost like a fingernail that's kind of sitting and it's not congruent and it's creating clicking or locking, 
um, a surgeon can has two options there where they can either go in with nearly a little set of clippers and, and clean off the, the surface there to make it uh, smoother or the other option is they can actually stitch it which which is a longer recovery time but they try and kind of not take the, the meniscus out but um, just repair it a little bit. The patellofemoral type stuff I was talking about earlier with the kneecap typically in, in nearly all scenarios we, we manage that with physiotherapy just and there's no surgery uh, needed for that type of knee pain. Well, I, I was that soldier because I've had, I've worked on on both knees and everything from, you know, torn cartilage to um, uh, a full ACL uh, repair and uh, a lump removed in another knee, the so-called good knee. So, you know, I, I've been down the surgery route, but the, uh, it can be, it can be irritating. I've found that uh, if there's a problem in your knee, especially if it involves maybe a you tear in the cartilage, it can go from something as simple as irritating to very painful or even your knee locking up. Yeah, yeah, they can progress, and that's why it's it, you know it's important when you identify that there's an issue there to uh, to get it looked at and, and seen because, like you were saying there, depending on the on the presentation, uh, some things can can kind of go downhill a little bit quicker. And when you catch these things earlier, say if there is a little meniscal tear that needs to be um, treated, the sooner kind of it's it's looked at, the better. Um, early intervention is always is always best and in most cases there's kind of nice simple things we can do in, in daily life even to take pressure off the knee um, you know I, I've kind of got a, a little list of things that we can go through but if we talk about kind of overall pressure on the knee there's a there's a few kind of simple bits of advice that we can uh, that we can use to try and try and take well, pressure off the let's off talk the knee. let's talk about them I suppose the, the the obvious one is you know try and try not to have excess weight on because uh, the more weight we have on the more pressure we're putting on our knees yeah like we we know when we're doing anything and we're just using running as, as an example but if i go out and jog up to between three and five times my body weight has to be absorbed through my knees with every step so if you think about the average person might take 80 to um you know 70 to 80 steps on each leg and every kilogram of body weight that i that i have has a huge impact on how much uh pressure my, my knees are going to be under so you know even um, when we talk about body weight there we're talking about adipose tissue so kind of fatty tissue so if, if you put on a, a kilogram of muscle you know that that muscle will give you strength and, and help you whereas it's really the the extra kind of body fat if we can you know lose you know even up to a kilo of that it, it ends up taking a, a lot of pressure off the off the two knees over the course of a whole day what other measures can we take to, uh, to, you know, to try to ease the pressure on our knees over the years, over, over, you know, sort of day to day? So day to day, what we would kind of be preaching, I suppose, in the clinic is to increase activity uh, slowly and consistently. So the body doesn't like kind of sharp changes to lifestyles at all. So if you're taking up kind of a new sport or you're trying to get involved in more exercise, um, just to be looking at kind of introducing that, you know, in a, in a slow and consistent way, whether it's walking or cycling or, or running or swimming or doing whatever it is. So try and avoid kind of sharp increases or decreases in what we're doing. That gives the body a chance to adapt and, and get used to the load that we're under. Um, and I mentioned running there, but, you know, often people think that you have to stay away from, from impact in order for the, for the body to be I suppose healthy but what we know from the research is that uh, if you don't use it you lose it so uh, to a large extent when we keep fit and we keep strong um, and even exposing the body to a little bit of impact isn't isn't a bad thing at all you know where it's where it's appropriate because it keeps the joints nice and nice and fresh and healthy and, and kind of trains them to be able to cope with that type of load um, I suppose you, you need to look at how you're doing activities as well. So if it's an activity that involves a specific technique or something that you look and, and maybe get, get involved with a coach or get a physio to look at the way that you're doing things to maybe take a little bit of pressure off the knees, whether it's, uh, you know, squatting or lunging or cycling or doing different things. Um, so make sure that you're doing it in the correct, in the correct way. Um, we know strength is massively important. So, you know, engaging in strength exercises and a, and a bit of flexibility, um, you know, training is really important for keeping the knees healthy as well. 
and and I suppose it's just being smart about what you're doing. So um, if you have a pre-existing knee issue that you know is there, you know, get a bit of advice about you know what type of exercise you should be doing or what type of sport you should be doing, whether whether you know exercises that involve a lot of impact are appropriate for you or not. As I say, to some degree, they're they're, they're definitely important to be uh, integrating into things when it's when it's appropriate. But you know, everybody's different, so and your own needs might not be able to uh, to cope with that. So just being being smart about what you're what you're putting the needs under. Common sense approach yeah. and and keeping and keeping the, the knees strong important as well. Uh, someone says, I ran a marathon at the weekend on the 23rd mile. I hurt the outside of my left knee. I finished the marathon. Give me any advice. Um, if it's the outside of the knee, one of the things that we would see a, a lot, it's actually termed runner's knee, uh, but it's you've got a, an iliotibial band, which is basically a thick piece of connective tissue um, that goes from the outside of your hip down the outside of your leg and attaches down onto uh, the outside of your of your knee there now without kind of seeing or assessing it's difficult to to diagnose and and you know but this would be on the if we're talking about pain and runners on the outside of the knee this would be the the most common one that we would see now obviously in 23rd mile you're going to have done a lot of kind of bending and straightening of the knee and taking a lot of steps there um so I'd, I'd say probably the pace that you were running at and the distance that you covered just uh was a new experience for the knee uh you know and, and the likelihood is that it's an inflammatory response so the tissue has got a bit agitated and angry with you and um, so the best thing to do there would be to deload it so obviously a lot of people post kind of marathon will go out for recovery runs and, and do different things like that I, I wouldn't advise running on that knee if it's sore on the outside um you could look at uh, going to the gp and getting some anti-inflammatories maybe just get in touch with you know, a physio and, and get somebody to have a look at it and, and give you a concrete diagnosis. But in the meantime, I would be using a little bit of ice for symptom relief um, and just taking taking pressure off that knee and giving it a bit of relative rest. And that applies, I suppose, to most injuries. If you have a wee niggle that's come on or injure your knee in any way, uh, ice and rest is the, is the first thing. Yeah, yeah. Until you know, until you know more about it, I, I would say definitely if you're if you're experiencing a new type of pain that wasn't there before, um, you know, you're you're better kind of knowing why it's why it's happening there before you kind of push it any further. Yeah. Finally, Johnny, uh, a question about uh, an Achilles injury. Uh, nothing to do with the knee. Well, they're probably nothing. It's slightly torn Achilles, but it's very slow to heal. Any suggestions? Well, Achilles can be slow anyhow to heal. Yeah, and what what can often happen is um, because a tear is typically a you know a fresher type of injury. So uh, basically, if a t if a piece of tissue is strong enough to tolerate a certain load, and then we ask it to work harder, then it's it's strong enough to tolerate. You'll get a tear in a structure, um, and those. So we would grade tears normally. So it can say a grade one could be anything from seven to ten days. A grade two anywhere from kind of four to eight weeks. Um, you know, so they, they come in, in different stages, depending on, uh, we don't kind of have an idea of how long this has been happening, but when, when kind of the injury is, is long lasting and can become chronic or, or there for a number of months, uh, what can often happen is it changes into a thing called a tendinopathy. So rather than the tear being a problem, it's now the fact that the tissue is weak and painful. Um, you know, as a result, possibly if a tear earlier on, but the best way to treat that would be the likes of uh, a progressive strength program. So actually retraining the tendon to be able to, to tolerate more with the likes of, you know, heavy heel raises and, and getting the tissue and the Achilles nice and strong and robust. And you can do other treatments for pain relief in the interim. Um, shockwave therapy is also very effective for it as well. But I'd say if, if it's there long term, um, really it's not the type of thing you'll kind of rub your way out of pain you're going to have to exercise that tendon and make it make it nice and strong okay okay well hopefully that's uh, helped the listener and uh, thanks johnny uh, knees we we uh, uh, no matter what stage in life and no matter how active we are uh, we all need them and we need them in good shape so uh, look after our knees we only we only have the two of them and uh, uh, thanks thanks a million for uh for the advice, appreciate it. Uh, Johnny Lowry from JT Physio. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, John.
chat. Why not treat yourself to a spot of lunch today at Kelly's Diner in Abercany? Good man, John. Have Thanks for having me on. Table and have lunch served to you at this award-winning family diner. Rediscover lunchtime at Kelly's Diner. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, John, for coming on. I appreciate that. Hey. Uh, no problem. Look after yourself. Good man. Cheers. Right, okay. You.